Okay, there it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Keiko is muted. Keiko, needs, Keiko you need to unmute. Oh, there you go. Okay, Shara está. That's got it. Shall I start? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you, Kago. Um, today is Communion Sunday. We have, please have bread and fruit of the vine available. Um, our worship leader today is Pastor Mark, is it Grenier? Griner. Griner, excuse me. Part, um, Pastor Mark Griner focuses on spiritual direction as well as healing, pain, and trauma. Along with 25 years serving Presbyterian congregations, he sees patients in his Chinese medical practice in Silver Spring, Maryland crosshealings.org. His wife, Kolya, works in environmental ministry with the Interfaith Partners for the Chesapeake, uh, Chesapeake Watershed. Okay, we'll now do the call to worship. Um, gladden the souls of your servants, O God. To you, O Lord, we lift up our hearts. The Lord is good and forgiving, abounding on steadfast love. Listen to our cries, O God, and answer. God is great and does wondrous things. So we come to worship and bow down before you, O Lord. Let us glorify God's name together. Praise the Praise Lord. The Lord.
Amen. God of grace, you created our minds to grow in wisdom. You created our hearts to expand with love for you and your world. You created our voices to sing your praises forever. Fill us to overflowing with your Holy Spirit, so we may worship you in spirit and in truth, bold and unafraid to follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we pray together. God, who creates the future, you call us to follow you. Yet we confess we prefer to remain where we are. You offer us new beginnings, yet we continue to make the same familiar choices. You invite us into the fullness of life, yet we distance ourselves from you and each other through fear and doubt. Forgive us, O oh God. Cleanse us from every unworthy thought, word, and deed with the grace of Christ our Lord. Rouse us by the Spirit to be intentional, courageous disciples, even when the world does not welcome us or the word we proclaim. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In Christ, we are made a new creation. The old life is gone, and the new life has come. Friends, let us declare the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, Christ we are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks be to God. This is the time in our service when we are invited to share joys and concerns. If you have something to share, Please raise your hand and I will call on you or type a message in the chat. Um, Barney, wait a minute, you have to unmute. Carolyn. Okay. This young lady next to me, as of today, we've been married for 17 years. Uh, this was our third ceremony. We, we'll tell you sometime because First one didn't take, we were in China and we were in violation of the law there, so we had to get married again. <laughs> this is this is our 17th anniversary. <laughs> Anyone else, sir? Oh, Mark. So this, uh, this weekend, it's a very special weekend. Not only is it the Juneteenth weekend recognizing the abolition of slavery, also it's the 224th PCUSA or Presbyterian Church USA General Assembly. And yesterday, GA elected and installed its two leading officers, co-moderators, co and a sign of hope and leadership for our time. One is uh, Alona Street Stewart, and the other is Gregory Bentley. Uh, Alona is, um, is uh, an indigenous woman, and Gregory is an African-American man. So we rejoice and we give thanks to God for these new leaders in our church. Anyone, anyone on the phone have a message or something? You can unmute the phone, the phone receptor. Um, I can't see any hands or is there something in the chat? No? Bernie, Charles? Yes, uh, Rebecca has a has a bad uh, injury on her leg, and she needs healing. Okay, I hope it heals. Um, that's yeah. What what did she do? She fell outside in the garden and and bumped her shin real bad. Oh my. Okay. And um, anybody else? Bernie. Anyone else? Oh, um, Bruce. Bernie. Oh, okay. Does Bernie have something to say? Excuse me. No, they're Bruce? doing 
if people have something to say. Do you have something to say? No, no, okay. Thank you. Okay. Bruce, please. Okay. Um, there are a lot of fathers on, in, the, uh, in the congregation listening in today, and I think that that's uh, great. I've uh, been wished uh, Happy Father's Day by my daughter who's still stranded in, uh, Ashley's still stranded in Thailand, although she's been there so long, I don't know if she's stranded anymore. Uh, and also, uh, you know, Sarah and, and, and Jackie both uh, wish me Happy Father's Day. I had to turn around and, and thank them because without them, I would not be a father and I wouldn't be as thankful as I am today to have my family. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, Tom. Okay, it's done. Yes, uh, Travel Mercies for Wendy and my daughters. Uh, they uh, ended our Hilton, their Hilton Head vacation yesterday and they came back uh, through uh, Myrtle Beach to visit friends, so they're on their way home today. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. God of compassion and courage, in our weakness you are strength. In our darkness, you are light. In our sorrows, you are comfort and peace. Embrace each situation we remember in our prayers this day with your steadfast love. We thank you for moments of joy that still break into our lives, even in the strange times of pandemic and reopening of our communities. For love given and received, for friends who furnish our life with meaning and happiness, and for family who embrace us with love and understanding. And we thank you all, you all for caring and faithful fathers celebrated this day, remembering those whose fathers have died and praying for those whose fathers cut off, are cut off from their families. God of the nations, we pray for our country and countries around this world so deeply affected by COVID-19. Guide leaders to make wise decisions about reopening communities and give patience and courage to those whose lives have been disrupted, especially those who fear what the future holds. Wherever injustice rules and misinformation confuses, protect the vulnerable and shine the light of your truth to reveal the path to justice and renewed hope. God of compassion, we pray for peace to prevail in places torn by war and ask that respect for human life will grow wherever people are abused or scorned. We pray for all those who are suffering and for all who mourn significant loss. Surround them with your love and support them with the strength of your spirit. Open our eyes to see how we might bring comfort to those who are hurting. Eternal God, you hold the dead as well as the living in your tender care. We thank you for the people in every age who have entered into your heavenly presence, especially those dear to our own hearts. Keep us in communion with them and bring us to dwell with them at the last in your everlasting light. Hear us as we offer these prayers and the ones we carry in the silence of our hearts. We pray together in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead, lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. For, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power and the glory for now and forever. Amen. Um, Pentecost season celebrates the gifts of the Spirit energized in the church to touch the world with God's love and mercy, God's truth and justice. Whatever you offer back to God becomes a gift which can change the world for the sake of Jesus Christ. Your faithful stewardship allows us to maintain our church building, even though we are not occupying it. Leaves, leaves continue to fall into gutters. The parking lot continues to need potholes filled. Your faithful stewardship allows us to honor our responsibilities. Please continue to submit your offerings by check or PayPal using the PayPal link on our Facebook page or the church's website. Let us present our gifts to God in gratitude that God's love never lets us go. Okay. Um, God of wisdom, 
by the power of your Holy Spirit, open our minds to your truth, our hearts to your gospel, and our hands so that we can do your will. In the name of Jesus, your living word, we pray. Amen. Amen. The first scripture reading is Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Hopefully you see a picture on your screen right now of people standing in a circle, holding hands, arms upraised. This is in a church service as people are dancing their prayers. It's called a sacred circle dance. Now this is a sign of jubilation that we see here, but our scripture reading just now was Jesus making a bold claim, saying, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. There's a promise there that we shall be comforted. You know, sometimes we do indeed feel like crying. And when Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn, it reminds me from the Psalms where it says, those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow like farmers, they will return with songs of joy, carrying the harvest sheaves with them. And when Jesus speaks about mourning, it also reminds me of Ecclesiastes, you know, made popular in that, that, that song, I think it's by the birds, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. So while there is a time to weep, there is also a time to dance our prayers as we see here. And this form of sacred circle dancing in it, my wife and I do this regularly in a group, uh, right now, it's via Zoom, where you can't do it in person, but nonetheless, it's in a group, and we hold hands. The steps are quite ancient and simple, so everybody can join in. And the song is, songs are sometimes quite old and sometimes quite new, like, for instance, Teze music that you might have sung in church. The woman who leads this in our group, her name is Evie, and Evie is a wise woman. She's 80 years of age, and Evie has seen a lot of life. She embraces people. She knows how to dance and how to rejoice. And she said something recently that really spoke to me. She said, we rejoice. And when we do not feel like, we rejo uh, like rejoicing, when we do not feel like re rejo uh, rejoicing, we practice rejoicing. I love that phrase about practicing rejoicing, even if we don't feel like it, because sometimes we dance our way into rejoicing. Someone else in the group said, well, that sounds like the rabbis in the Talmud teaching about practicing rejoicing. And there's a truth to that, because Evi herself is Jewish. But there's something more. See, Evie really taught me something about practicing rejoicing in those who mourn shall be comforted and blessed be blessed. You see, Evie is 80 years old and she comes from Europe and she and her family survived that time known as the Holocaust. Part of her family was imprisoned and somehow they made it in, in a concentration camp and somehow they made it out. And Evie now in the, in the golden years of her life, is so filled with rejoicing. And when she doesn't feel like it, she practices rejoicing. And so can we. There's a time to mourn, and a time to laugh, a time to dance, a time to rejoice. And blessed are we as we turn to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll turn now to the scripture reading, and as we prepare to hear God's word speaking to us, it is a psalm of lamentation, Psalm 38. It's a request for healing as well. So in a moment, I'll invite us to listen for those words of comfort and healing that especially speak to us. 
but I'd like to invite for just a moment that to be open to the Spirit speaking to us. We take a deep breath. And release, settling in. And let ourselves be truly supported by the chair where we're seated. Knowing that the God of heaven and earth is supporting us in this moment. The Spirit speaks in you whenever we encounter the scriptures. Let us listen for God's word of comfort and healing. Holy One, do not rebuke me in your anger or chastise me in your wrath. For your arrows hit their mark, and I felt the blows from your hand. There is no health in my body because of your indignation. There is no wholesomeness to my bones because of my sin. For my guilt has overwhelmed me. It's a heavy burden, too onerous for me to carry. My wounds stink and fester, and all because I was such a fool. I'm completely broken, bent low. I walk around in anguish all day, for my loins are filled with inflammation, and there is no health to my body. I am utterly exhausted and crushed. I scream because my heart and mind are filled with discord. Oh, Holy One, you know everything I long for and my groans aren't hidden from you. My heart is fever-wracked. My strength fails me. Even my eyes look dull and dead. My, fear, my friends and companions avoid me like the plague, and my neighbors stay far away. Those who seek my life lay their snares. The ones who want to hurt me threaten ruin and plot their treachery all day long. But I act like I'm deaf and can't hear, like I'm mute and can't speak. I don't listen to what they're saying. And there are no retorts in my mouth. It's because I wait for you, Holy One, and you will answer me, my God, my Sovereign. I said, don't let them gloat over me. Don't let them get the advantage when my foot slips. But now I'm ready to fall and my pain never leaves me. I confess my transgression. I am sorry that I rebelled against you. I have many mortal enemies. And those who hate me without reason are numerous. Those who repay good with evil slander me for pursuing good. Don't desert me too. My God, don't be far away from me. Hurry and help me. My sovereign. My liberator. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. So as we pause for just a moment in silence, is there a name, a name perhaps from the scripture or perhaps a name that you yourself most call out to God when you need God profoundly? Come, Holy Spirit, speak anew to us your word, for we call out to you in trust. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Years ago, years ago, I saw a large poster for workplace grievances, and in big letters it said, please list full details of your complaint in the space below. And sure enough, below, it had a tiny little box. It's like when you ask someone sincerely how they're doing and they dismissively say, I can't complain, who would listen anyway? Well, complaint believes just that, that no one wants to listen. 
And that's why instead, I love lament. Lament affirms relationship. Lament means when we cry out, someone is listening. Lament dares speaking out. Lament says, I will be heard. Lament as prayer changes things. It changes our hearts when we are so honest and we lay it on the line with God. Prayer changes things when we lament out loud on the streets. Who could possibly have imagined when the pandemic began that now we would be in this global astonishing moment of reckoning and lament and affirmation that black lives matter? with countries that enslaved now beginning a new reckoning with the call to remember and to do the hard work of dismantling racism. Well, this is the power of lamentation, of singing the blues, because lament believes that God is listening and will answer. The difference between lament and mere complaint is that lament affirms the relationship with God and expects to be truly heard, especially when we're facing profound challenges. When we cannot praise, we can still be in relationship with God and lament and lay it on the line. We can weep our tears when we do not yet have words to say. We can pour out our heart we can dare speaking until we find what it is we do have to say, for often we don't know what is in our hearts until we say it. And often as we speak together, it's we, then we discover what's really happening in us and among us. When we dare to ask, the blessing come. Like with Pastor Megan needing this day to be for her family with the memorial service for her father-in-law who died and the church providing a break. Thanks be to the church in answering that need, and lamentation and mourning. See, instead of that tiny little box, lament psalms leave a great big box for us to fill in. Lament speaks in great big terms in generalities that we can then fill in with the specificity as we name our own specific experiences in our own voice, which matters. Lament is a way of owning and honoring our own heartbreak. Lament is a remarkable language. In the ancient world, people had recourse to the language of gods and fates, believing that uh, fates or gods held sway over small human beings who could do little. But lament doesn't use that language. Lament doesn't give up saying human beings are too small to matter. Then there's the opposite language, making, making human beings so big that they can bend the fates. That's the language of incantation and casting magic. But lament doesn't inflate humans either. Lament is instead both bold and humble as it affirms with the voice of the I. Psalm 38 speaks I, me, or mine more than 20 times. I matter. I hurt. My voice, my experience matters. My life matters to God. And as we speak and listen to one another, we matter to one another. Psalm 38 models laying it on the line, all of the anguish, the reality of enemies, the asking where is God, and taking responsibility all at the same time. See, there's at least a possibility in the precise naming of pain. There's at least a possibility, the possibility of our anguish, anguish especially being a place of openness in receptivity to God. There's a, a, a song by contemporary uh, songwriter Leonard Cohen says that there is a crack in everything. And that's where the light gets in. 
lament. It's the naming of our cracks where we've been broken open. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, says, say the apostles they, as they turn to Jesus with their pain. This is not to justify or to glorify pain, but sometimes, sometimes in our pain, we're especially open to the mercy of God. And so for a moment this morning, what most speaks to me about lament is not quite so much the precise naming of the pain, but the calling on God, finding those names for God, that I can authentically pray. And using those names as a kind of portal through which I or we have been most open to God. Psalm 38 uses several names, not just one. Holy One, my God, my Sovereign, my Liberator. I'd like to share, if I may, just briefly a story about my own prayer life. And I'll say more about this next week as I have the opportunity to be with you again and talk more about a recent medical mission I was on in Nepal. In going to Nepal for a medical mission, in the weeks and months ahead, I confess to you that I was sore afraid. I hadn't anticipated how afraid I would be facing a new culture, being far away from home, wondering about my own capacity to be of service. Fears I hadn't even realized that I had came to the surface. And so I found as I prepared to go and then as I was there, as I lay my head on my pillow each night, I so needed to turn to God again and again and again. Someone has named prayer as primary speech, absolutely root core speech in our life. Like when our lives are in danger, to whom do we call? Oftentimes there's this very root deep sense of us, this need of calling out for a parent in our name, uh, in our pain. And so what I found I did night after night I found that I, more than anything else, wanted to call, crawl up in the lap of God, remembering that experience of a child. It surprised me as a grown man to be in such need and to feel this, but the name that came to me to pray was Abba, the prayer, the name that Jesus uses for God in prayer. Papa. Papa. And so the question in these days that are so hard in so many different ways, what is the portal of your heart? How do you know God most intimately? When you pray because your life depends on it, what is that name for God or those names for God that leave you, leaves you most receptive to this intimacy with God, where we can come where we are when we are so hard pressed. Lament takes Jesus at his word when he said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Jesus is giving permission for us to be so honest before God. And this word comfort this word comfort is so interesting. Only a few hundred years ago in the late 1600s did the emphasis be, become on consolation, something like physical ease. There's a deeper meaning to the word comfort. If we open up that word comfort, we see it has two parts, come forth with strength. When we mourn, when we lament, that offering up is an opportunity especially to lean on God's strength, 
And here we're at the very heart of the mystery of our faith in Christ. The Apostle Paul spoke in 2 Corinthians 12 about his thorn in the flesh. He said, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. We don't know whether or not for Paul the pain was removed, but we do know that it drew Paul closer and closer to God. And so through the history of the church, we name this the Paschal mystery, that of communion, of bread and body broken and at the same time blessed. The mystery in the way of Jesus, who is crucified, crucified, And it was through crucifixion that resurrection came, that God's strength was made perfect in weakness. Paradoxical, perhaps, but lament or mourning, a willingness to admit our utter vulnerability is precisely the way to lean into and to find God's strength. It's the opposite of the superhero mythologies of strength and near invulnerability so common in our culture. Some of us have walked 12-step programs like AA and know the step of uh, making a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood God and to walk that step in a way where we've learned to call on God so personally. Prayer is utterly personal and at the same time beautifully social. And that's why this psalm ends with the theme of God, our liberator. Like in the Exodus story, where God brought liberation to the enslaved people of Egypt. And as the people of Israel coming out of Egypt. For as we find ourselves as children of the liberator God, citizens of the kingdom of God, leaning into God's strength. We can have the courage to be citizens of the country in which we live. So we can dare primary speech and more and be comforted with courage. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, we give you thanks that you are Mm, the blessed mystery, broken and making us whole, crucified and resurrected. And so we lean on you, trusting that as we mourn, we will find our comfort and courage and strength. For it's in you we pray. Amen. So we move now We move now into the time of communion, and I would invite that as we take a moment here, you gather the elements. You can gather some bread, and if you can gather some fruit of the vine, I have here both a cup, a chalice, and this for pouring. We come gathered in our homes, but just as we saw in that picture of people gathered together holding hands, in the power of the Holy Spirit and in Christ we are one. So although we may be physically distant, in Christ we are together. So as we gather and as we hear the words of the great thanksgiving, we listen always for five themes, creation and covenant, and Christ, and church, and the new creation and coming kingdom. Let us pray the the prayer of great thanksgiving as I lead. Oh, loving Christ, we give you such great thanks that you offer yourself for us. Holy God, we give you thanks for the beauty of creation that you continue to nourish so that the fruit of the vine 
and the bread of the earth can come to us. We give you thanks for the glory of creation. We give you thanks that you are the God of covenant, faithful to your people Israel and to us. We give you thanks, God, that you incarnated, incarnated in Christ Jesus, God made flesh and dwelling among us, speaking to us as one like us so that we may understand, becoming like us so that we might dare to hope that we might share in the glory of God. We give you thanks that you have empowered the church to be your mercy in the world. And so that we pray that you continue to empower us this day in all the places that we go, this week in all the places that we go, whether at home or in a store or at work or with our families. You will empower us to be bringers of your kingdom of mercy and grace. We trust in you through the power of your Holy Spirit to live through us. So on your strength that we lead, lean, fill us with your courage. In Christ's name, amen. So if you are gathered with someone in your space, you're invited to share the bread and to offer the bread to another, saying the body of Christ broken for you. For we know on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread with his friends. And he said, this is my body broken for you. And so he broke the bread and he said, take and eat of this, remembering me. And so this is the body of Christ broken for you. Let us share the bread. And if you are with someone this day, you may share the cup with them, saying the blood of Christ shed for you. For you remember that after the meal, Jesus took the cup. And Jesus said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, doing so, remembering me. For we know that as frequently as we drink of this cup and eat of this bread, we do proclaim the saving death of Jesus until he comes again. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let us receive. And let us pray. Risen Christ, we give you thanks that you meet us truly in this meal and that you fill us anew by the power of your Holy Spirit. For those of us, for those of us who have felt especially hard pressed in this last week, fill us so mightily by the power of your Spirit. And as you fill us all by the power of your spirit, this week, empower us to be grace and light and mercy and hope for one another and all the people we meet. Empower us to reach out to those who need your, <clears throat> your love. Thank you, risen Christ, for it's in you that we pray. Amen. And we all now join together in hymn number 372, Lord, I want to be a Christian.
led us goal this week to be bold with courage in Christ. The Christ who bore, said, blessed are those who mourn, for you shall be comforted. And let us with strength and bold hope go into this world rejoicing. And when we cannot rejoice, let us lament or practice rejoicing. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be so kind to you and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon us all with grace and mercy. And through us, be peace in the world. In the mercy of Christ, we trust and pray. Amen. Mary Ellen, you're muted, but thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Mary Ellen, you can speak now. I just wanted to say, just join us for a virtual coffee hour for about, I guess, 10 minutes or so. And then we can um, we'll come back and join Mark and maybe anyone else who wishes to hear about his ministry in Nepal, I believe. Actually, I think that's going to be next week. Oh, is that next week? That's okay. Next we can... week. But if I may speak to that just very briefly, um, I had the opportunity to be in Nepal just uh, uh, in, in um, uh, February and March with the medical mission. It was an absolutely amazing experience. I'm so very grateful for having gone. 